In this video, I will talk about why to learn C and how to start with it. So before, learn, before starting with why to learn C, let's talk about some background about C. So C was created by Dennis Suchi as you know, but there, is very, there are lots of hidden uh, concepts behind it. So there are, not, there, are, there are some professors, they claim, or some books, they claim that C, the name, the name C is not derived from anything. And the fact is, it is derived from B language. So the language C is because of B. Okay. So it all starts with 19, I guess it's 1969 when uh, Ken Thompson created B language. So we were not having any language which is which will be the complete language which, which using which we can do anything. And at that time, you uh, Ken Thompson wanted that language which is which will be complete language to remake Unix language. At that time. Dennis Switchy started working on C language with Ken Thompson. So when you say uh, founders of C programming is not just one, it's both Dennis Switchy and Ken Thompson. Okay. So once we complete, uh, once we have completed C language, uh, they they started working on Unix. And again, who's, who are the founders of Unix? Is not just Dennis Switchy or do, not just Ken Thompson. It is both Dennis Switchy and Ken Thompson. So for C founders are Dennis Switchy and Ken Thompson. For Unix founders are Ken Thompson and Dennis Switchy. Okay, now currently Ken Thompson is working for Google and he has also created a language called as Go. So founder of Go language, which is very famous language now, is Ken Thompson. Go was used to create a Dropbox. Uh, you know about Dropbox, right? So uh, yeah, so that is Ken Thompson. Now once we have C, C was the first complete language and that's why people say that C is the mother of all the languages. So when you say C is the mother of all the languages, it's because C was the first complete language. Now, so why to learn C then? Again, the answer is it's the first complete language, right? But we have lots of languages, right? We have Python now, we have C, we have Java. Can we directly learn Java? The answer is yes, you can directly start with Java, but make sure you have a hospital near your house so that you can get, you will get into ICU once you start with Java. The problem is Java deals with lots of things. It deals with syntax, it deals with the uh, OPS concept, it deals with lots of weird things. So instead of directly jumping on Java, you can start with basics and basics is C. You can start with Python. Python is much easier than C language. But when I say you should learn C language, it's just because of syntax. You should, if, you, if you want to learn how to create a structured programming or a programming which follows a specific syntax, you should learn C because in future if you want to learn Java, if you want to learn C++, they are they follow some structure. So we have to first start with C. Now how to start with C? Uh, the, the way you should start with C is first you should learn basics. So when I say you should learn basics is you have to start with the hardware level. What are the cheap level things? Or not cheap, cheap level things. So when you talk about hardware, so you should know how your CPU works, you should know how different chip works, you should know how your RAM works, you should know how your motherboard works, right? If you know all these things, it will be easier for you to understand how OS works. Hold on, is it depend? Is it OS dependent on your hardware? Of course, right? Can you install a uh, OS on your uh, on your Nokia double? Or you can can you install Android OS on your Nokia double on double zero phone? Of course not, right? Because your OS is dependent upon your hardware. So if you have to know the true capacity of OS, you should know the true capacity of hardware. So you should first know how your hardware works. What is ALU? What is the memory size? How can you create uh, memory blocks? What is cell? How bit byte works? After that, start working on OS, how OS works. Then, then you will say why to learn OS. Can you directly start with programming? Yeah, you can start with programming. Normally people recommend to start with programming. But the problem is, in future, let's say you are learning a high level concept like C-sharp, Java, all these concepts. So we have to implement something called as threads. And threads works on OS. So threads, the threads working is dependent upon your OS working. So if you don't know how your OS works, how can you, how can you implement threads? So start with OS. Now once you know how your OS works, I'm not talking about you have to, be, you have to do your PhD in OS. Just some basics. You know, how your, what is time sharing, all those things. Now once you know how OS works, start with the first code of C programming. Again, of course you have to start with some videos, right? So in this tutorial, in the further tutorials, I'll be talking about all those things. But make sure you don't skip any video. The problem is when you skip one video, you are missing one concept. And the same concept will be used in the maybe uh, the seventh tutorial. And then at that time you will say, what, what the hell this concept means? 
So don't skip any video. Again, one video is around four to five minutes, and that's not that's a big big issue, right? Because if you're learning something new, you're investing your money, your time, investing your money on your electricity electricity bill, not on your uh, classes bill now because the YouTube is free. So you're just investing your time basically. So when you invest your time, your four minutes means a new concept. So never skip a video. Okay, watch the complete video, and after watching every video, try to implement it. Because whenever you learn a new concept, it will store on your RAM. Because since RAM is volatile, so once you, if you're not implementing it, it will vanish. So how to store that data into your hard drive? So make sure after learning every concept, you just implement that concept. Create your own idea. Okay, just uh, implement prime numbers. Create your own ideas and implement it. Once you implement that concept, go for the next video. Now, after watching a set of tutorials, you should test your skills. Now, how to test your skills? You can go to, there are lots of websites where you can compete with other people. In fact, you can go to my website, which is telisco.com, and you can go to a test section, you can test your skills, you will get your score, you will understand how much you know about that language, and that will be better for your, you know, next, uh, if, you, if you want to learn a new concept after that, right? So you can learn all those things by step by step and do implement and do test your skill set. Okay? But if you have any doubt in that particular video, you can surely comment in the comment section. Somebody will reply. Maybe may not, uh, if I am busy with my work, somebody else from my subscriber channel, they, they do uh, reply to your comments. That's uh, that's how they that's how the YouTube works right so yeah so do do comment on my video so that I will reply your answers by commenting or I will make a new video of that okay so if you have if you want some new codes so just uh, comment that into the code section or comment comment section I will make sure I will make a new video of that okay so happy learning so thank you so much for watching and do subscribe for the next tutorials